Hey friends, it's Chad Gonzalez. Hey, do you like our YouTube channel? I mean, you're here, you're watching this. My question to you is this, have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? If not, hey, click that button, like and subscribe, hit that bell, hit the notification button so that you don't miss out on any of the new content that's here. We want you to be not just a viewer, we want you to be a subscriber. So again, hit like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the brand new content right here on the Chad Gonzalez Ministries YouTube channel. God bless you. Remember in Christ, we always win. Hey friends, this is Chad Gonzalez. Welcome to this session of Healing Talks. So thrilled to get to spend some time with you and so humble that you're spending some time with me. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about faith and doing the works of Jesus. Uh, before we get into that, I just wanna say thank you so very much to all of our partners. I love you and so thankful uh, for all of your prayers, encouragement, and support. Hey, if you are a partner with us and you have not sent us your partner picture, please do that. Uh, just grab your phone, take a nice little selfie, and uh, email it to us at info at chagonzales.com. In the subject line, just put partner picture, and it'll go on our partner wall. I love, love, love getting to see the pictures of all of our partners. Uh, I see a lot of the, the names that come through, but it's nice to be able to put a, a, a picture a face with the name. And so uh, just send us a selfie in that email and put partner picture on that. Also make sure and download the app for your phone. We've got some great resources available for you, available available for you uh, in the app. We've got other resources in the partner platform. And if you didn't know, module four of the Healing Academy is now out. You can go to, if you're not a partner, you can go to thehealingacademy.com and uh, module four, you can access that. There's, there's four modules now. Um, if you are a partner with us, you know that you get it for free. And so it's there in the partner platform for you. If you're not a partner, you'd like to become a partner. You can very simply go to chadgonzalez.com backslash partner, and you can become a partner with us for any amount and any amount will get you into the partner platform. Uh, in that partner platform, we've got some new books, some new eBooks that are available there. And we've got some courses that we are developing right now that will be going in there as well. So lots of, lots of good stuff going on. Um, hey, I want to make mention to you, uh, as far as meeting-wise, we have uh, the last meeting of the month in uh, September. Uh, we're going to be at Reach Church uh, this last Sunday. Uh, Reach Church in Sand Springs, Oklahoma. It's, it's a little suburb of Tulsa. So we'll be there on Sunday. And then coming up in October, we're going to be in the London, United Kingdom area. We're going to be back over in, in the uh, the East coast of Canada, and uh, then we'll be in Arkansas, uh, up in Mountain Home, Arkansas, up near uh, Branson, Missouri. So great meetings coming up. So excited about all that God is doing and uh, the fact that we are so privileged to be a part of what he's doing in these last days. And I'm so humbled and honored that uh, you are a part of this wonderful team that God has been building, and uh, we're just advancing together. Praise God. All right. So if you have your Bible, let's turn to John chapter 14. Uh, just uh, make mention, we're going to take communion here at the end. So you can grab your juice, cracker, bread, water, whatever you're, you're using for your communion. Uh, John chapter 14, one of my favorite scriptures. And this is where I just got going a long time ago. Just hanging out here, chewing and meditating on what Jesus said. I want to look at this, this very simple thing right here. And this is something I've been kind of dealing with then myself. John 14, 12, Jesus talking to the disciples. And he said, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. I've talked on this extensively over the last 20 years. This has been a major, major part uh, of me. And if, if there's if there's a scripture in the Bible, one of the scriptures in the Bible that defines me, it will certainly be John chapter 14 and verse 12. But I want you to notice what he said here. The, this the simple statement here, whoever believes in me. Now, certainly. Um, he's going to go on. He's talking about this piece of salvation here that we, when we believe in him, we become united with him. We're in a place where we can do what he did and do even greater things. But, but there's a simple thought that I want to just kind of spend a little bit of time on. 
And it's something I, I've been dealing with myself personally. He said, whoever believes in me, you know, this whole thing about believing in Jesus and doing the works of Jesus, you know, you can get to a place where you start off and it's all about him. You're thinking about him and what you're doing, but then you can get to a place pretty easily and pretty quickly where you start doing the works of Jesus, but you forget about him. We see this happen in ministry all the time, that people that start off very humble, starts off, it's all about him. Uh, and it starts off in a place of complete, absolute dependency on him. And then you see people start to begin to err and they're, they're doing the things of God but not really with God on their mind so much anymore. They're, they're doing the things of God, but not much as not, not as much dependency on God anymore. We don't want to get to that place. Because, you know, I've watched people over the years. I'm very much a people watcher from the standpoint of I want to grow. I, I always want to be learning. I always want to be advancing. And I've watched people get to a place where they're, they're doing the right things, but they've disconnected from him. And this is where you see people start to get off because they start to see some results. They start to see some success. They start to see people calling their names. They start to see the books the TV programs, whatever. We've got, to, we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus in everything that we do. You know, if you look back at the 40s and 50s, at the, the great healing revival took place back then in America in the tents. And I'm not saying this to be critical by any means. It's just... It's facts and it's it's learning. Um, but you, there's some videos you can find on YouTube now. Um, you can see the beginning of this thing with certain ministers and the end of it. You know, there's there's a couple of ministers in particular. You see some of the some of the videos from the very beginning, and it really is all about Jesus. I mean, just this absolute dependency on Him, and it's about Him. And you see some of the videos toward the end, and it's more about them. It's about the, now it's, unless, instead of being about Jesus, now it's, it's about the size of, of our tent that we have. It's about the number of people that we have in our meetings. It's about, you know, listen to us. We've got the largest crowds, the largest tents. We've got the largest outreach. We got, you know, and, and it starts becoming about us. Well, the moment it starts becoming about you and not about Jesus, you're off. And if you don't watch it, you're going to get off really, really bad. And it's going to lead to really bad situation. I don't want to ever be in that place. And I don't want you to ever be in that place. And, you know, as we continue to advance and, and move forward and the things of God move forward in revelation, our understanding of things, I don't want to ever get to a place where I'm doing the works, but I've stopped believing in him. And I'm not talking about you don't believe in Jesus anymore. I'm talking about this connection, this consciousness, this awareness of him, that when I'm doing his works, I'm still believing in him. I'm conscious of him. You see, when we get to a place where we're trying to work up faith, we're trying to work up the gifts, we're trying to do these things, I've stopped believing in Him. I'm not saying I've stopped believing in Him as my Savior, but I've stopped believing in Him from my dependency. I've got to realize I'm always dependent. I am just a branch. That's all I am. I'm a branch. I'm not the trunk. I'm not the roots. I'm the branch. That's all I am. That's all I ever will be as a branch. 
Now, connected to him, abiding in him, fruit will be produced. But the moment I start to separate and I think it's about me, I can do this my way, I can do it all on my own. That's when I start to get splintered. I start to get disconnected and things start not working as well. It's always about me. We've got to follow Jesus' Jesus' example. Look at what he says here in John um, chapter 5. Verse 19, he says this, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. We need to be at that place and stay at that place. I can do nothing of myself. I am only going to do what I see my Father do. I'm only going to say what I hear my Father say. You see Jesus' absolute dependency on him. In John chapter 5 and verse 30, he says, I can of myself do nothing. I can of myself do nothing. I've seen ministers today not calling out any names or anything like that. I see ministers today. And you, you can see where some is just becoming about them. When, when all I hear about is your anointing, you're this, you're gifting, you're that, you, 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 you. Well, but you know, you can't, you can't get mad at, at one group because we look at what's sung in church during praise and worship and most of the songs are, it's all about me, 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 me. A lot of places there's no worship going on. There's no worship of God. It's, it's worship of me. I mean, we've, we've got a lot of selfishness in, in the church as a whole today. We're looking at us. We're looking at us when it comes to our faith. We're looking at us when it comes to our results. And we've, we've slowly been detaching from him. But Jesus says in John chapter 15, in verse 4, he said, Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine and you're the branch. We've got to remember who we are. It's a very fine line that we are to walk. Because like if you look at um, Colossians, again, I love Colossians 2 and Colossians 3. If you look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, he says, And put on the new man who's renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. I've got to look to Jesus to understand who I am. John, uh, 1 John 4, 17 says, As he is, so am I in this world. That when I see him, I see me. And so that's a part of understanding my identity. Yet, uh, the other piece of my identity is also understanding that without him, I'm nothing. I'm just a branch. Now that branch connected to that trunk, we're everything. And, I, and I'm like him. And what he has is in me. And as I see him, I see me from that standpoint. But I also have to understand I am absolutely 100% dependent on him. I can do nothing of myself. I can do nothing in and of myself. Jesus said even in John chapter 14 and in verse uh, 10, he says, do you not believe I'm in the Father and the Father in me? He's, he's talking about union here on the same level. But then he says, the words I speak to you, I don't speak on my own authority. It's the Father who dwells in me that does the works. So Jesus says, we're, we're one, we're in union, we're on the same level, but at the same time, I'm completely dependent on him. I can't do nothing without him. It's actually him that does things through me. And you see Jesus with an absolute 100% consciousness and awareness of his union with the Father and the Father with him and his dependency on the Father and yet had no problem saying this in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, 
and made himself of no reputation. So you see this thing of one, but also separate and dependent. And you have to keep this in line as we begin to advance and walk in these things. I can do life. Uh, this is good. Put this in the chat. I'm going to write, actually, I'm going to write this down to you. I want you to put this in the chat. I can do life like him as long as I am dependent on him. I can do life like him as long as I'm dependent on him. You see, Jesus even actually said this in John 14 as well. This is good. I'm, I'm getting some, some stuff here. I don't have any notes. I'm just, we're just talking. But John chapter 14 and verse 7, Jesus says, If you've known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and you've seen him. And he says in verse 9, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how do you say, show us the Father? But then he also goes on and says, but I can't do anything of myself. It's dependency. He shows oneness. If you want to see him, look at me. But at the same time, I'm completely dependent on him. I've got to be believing in him. I, I've, I've got to keep my conscience aware. I've got to be believing in him to do what I do. The reason I'm bringing all this up, I, we'll finish up right here. The reason I'm bringing this all up is from this standpoint. When we go out to minister to people, when we go to lay hands on people, when we go to pray for other people, we've got to make sure we're doing it from a place of dependency on him. Because it's very, very easy to get to a place where I'm doing these things, but not really in faith about it at all. It's easy to get to a place where I begin to do these things and not even be conscious of Jesus at all. This is why I'm not a huge fan of prayer lines. Now, I'm not against them. But, you know, when I say prayer lines, I mean the ministry lines where, you know, at the end of service, everybody comes up, we lay hands on people. I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm not against it, but I'm not a huge fan of it. And it's from the standpoint of the minister. Because it's very easy. Now, look, let me just say it like this. I get it. If it's such a large, large setting, if there's a, if there's a ton of people in the room, you can't just go to each individual person in the congregation. You'd be there for hours and hours and hours and hours. So it's easier for everyone to come up. But what happens too many times with ministers is that I know I'm treading holy ground here or religious ground, one of them, but it gets too easy just to go and just lay hands on people and, and not even really think much about it. And, and it gets too easy for it to turn into just a, an emotional thing instead of a Jesus thing. We don't want to be laying empty hands on people. Um, we don't want to be laying emotional hands on people. Hmm. We want to be laying Jesus' hands on people. Put that in the chat. I'm going to write that. Don't make fun of me and don't laugh at me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this down too. Ready? We don't want to lay empty hands on people. And we don't want to lay uh, emotional hands. We want to lay Jesus's hands. We want to lay Jesus's hands on people. Well, how do we do that? Well, Jesus, Jesus has to be on my mind and I need to be believing in him. I need to be conscious of him. 
what, what led me to this thought was was actually several months ago. You know, I've been teaching a lot on our imagination and our thoughts, our soul over the last two years. And the Lord checked me on this because during the services, I would get people to use their imagination and begin to just, use, just begin to see Jesus, become conscious of him from the standpoint of them receiving. And one day the Lord checked me on this. From this standpoint, I was getting people to become more conscious of him for them to receive. But I wasn't doing the same thing for me in order to release. I remember I was, I was, I was sitting there, I was studying one day and, and the, the Holy Spirit brought that to my mind. You haven't been doing to yourself what you've been doing to other people. You haven't been, you haven't been having yourself to do what you're asking other people to do in that regard. Now they, oh, that's right. And I, I don't want to be in a place where I'm doing anything uh, mechanically. And, and I think I've done a pretty good job for myself um, of staying out of that. But I know if I want to see greater results, and I do, that's going to be tied to a greater consciousness of him. And so um, one of those things about Jesus' hands is something I've been telling people and it's something I've, I've been meditating on myself. If we are the body of Christ and when we're ministering to other people, we are the body of Christ. He is the head, we're the body, we're that branch and it's through the branch that fruit is produced. I've got to stay connected to the head. I, I need to be conscious. I need to be believing in him while I'm doing this. There needs to be an absolute dependency on him while I'm doing this. Um, you know, I remember, I remember when, when I first started, we, we, we started our very first church in college station, Texas. And I remember, I mean, I've never, really prayed for anybody before there was one time I got I ministered at a church ministered at a church in Silsby Texas a good friend of mine Terry Graves um, he that was the first church I ever ministered in and uh, he had asked me to come and do a Sunday night and so outside of that you know we, we'd pray for some people outside of that in a ministry setting I hadn't done anything else until we started our first church. And I remember, you know, and those first couple of years of, there was some, there was some nervousness there. Uh, and because of that, just, I mean, absolute dependence on God. I mean, I'm doing everything and anything I think I'm supposed to do to be able to be in that place. I remember I would get to church, you know, hours and hours before on a Sunday morning to just study and pray. Uh, I mean, it gets me a little emotional just thinking back, you know, those times in the beginning. And, you know, the, the, the last few weeks, I just kind of looked back at myself and like, the, the, the nervousness isn't there because I've been doing this a while and, and growing in my relationship with the Lord. But, I just want to make sure I always stay in a place of believing in him, that I'm dependent on him. You see, let me give you this and we'll close right here and we'll take communion. It's a story that we, we know well. If you look at Matthew chapter 14, it's Peter when he sees Jesus he walks on the water. Matthew chapter 14, and verse 25, it says, In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. It says, A ghost. And they were crying out for fear. Jesus said, It's I, be not afraid. Peter says, Hey, if it's you, Lord, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And when Peter came down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So look at this. Peter wasn't trying to get faith. He wasn't trying to believe that I can do this. He wasn't 
standing before the water and going, I believe, I receive, I believe, I receive, I believe, I receive, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I mean, almost sounded like Porky Pig. He wasn't doing any of that. Why? His eyes are on Jesus. He's focused on Jesus, conscious of Jesus, believing in him. He wasn't believing in himself. He wasn't believing I can do this. Believe no, he's believing in Jesus. And in the midst of a storm, and the boat are rocking, and the winds and waves rocking and howling, with his eyes, with believing in him, he steps out of the boat and onto the water. And he's walking on the water, and he's walking with the very same faith that Jesus is walking in. Why? Because he's believing in him. He's not trying to believe in his faith. He's not trying to look to himself, look to his confession, look to his education, look to his past years of ministry experience. He's believing in Jesus to do this. But then it says that when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. Oh, wait, you can't walk on the water when there's a storm. You can't walk on the water when there isn't a storm, right? I mean, what did the storm matter? But he caught, he, he saw the, the, he saw the waves and felt the wind and saw the storm. And in that moment, his eyes often, he's not believing in Jesus anymore. He's believing in the storm. And because he stopped believing in Jesus, he began to believe in the storm. It automatically produced fear and it produced, produced the results of the world. You see, when we're believing in Jesus, we're not trying to get more faith. We're not trying to even release our faith. We're not trying to, to produce anything. We're just believing in him. And you see, when you believe in him and you get your focus on him and on him only, and off of everything of the world, off your circumstances, off the problems, the trials, the cares, and you just get focused in on him, faith flows out. Faith flows out like a mighty rushing river. I'm not even trying to work it up. It's just a byproduct of believing in him, of being focused on him and what he's walking in. I begin to walk in and the results that he has, I begin to have. Why? I'm just believing in him. I'm being that branch that's now reconnecting myself to the vine. But the moment I go from looking at Jesus, believing in Jesus to looking at the storm and believing in the storm, you know what? This is what happens. I go from here looking at Jesus. I go to hear the storm and, and you know what happens? No fruit. Looking at Jesus, believing in him, connected, fruit, abiding, fruit. Looking at the storm, believing in the storm, disconnected, no fruit. See, we've said it for a long time, but I'll keep saying it. Whatever has your imaginations has your faith. What would happen if we began to become more conscious of Jesus? Is it possible we'd begin to experience him more, not only in our, in our meetings, but in our lives? I mean, let me just be blunt. If we're not experiencing Jesus in our meetings, what are we focused on? Hmm. Something to think about. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and take communion together. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 11, Paul gives these instructions. He says, I got this straight from the mouth of Jesus. He said, I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave thanks for the disciples, he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. Do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Praise God. So the blood, the body that was poured out for us, broken for us. The forgiveness of sin, redeeming us from the curse, redeeming us from sickness and disease, making us no longer a slave to Satan, a slave to the curse, but a master, making us more than a conqueror. We do this in remembrance of what Jesus did for us, but we also do it in remembrance of what Jesus did in us and who he is with us, that he's never left us, 
He's never forsaken us. And because of his sacrifice, he is with us always. That wherever I go and in all that I do, I know that he's there. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you for your blood that was poured out for me and your body that was broken for me, that I would be righteous. I would be healed and whole, forgiven. I love you and thank you for taking up residence within me, that I can expect the glory of God because of Christ in me. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go ahead and break and eat. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you, friend. I love you so very much. So very thankful for you. Uh, together as a team, as an army that the Lord is building, let's continue to advance. Let's keep moving forward. Let's keep spreading the love of Jesus and telling people who they are in Christ. Hey, I want to encourage you this week. Find somebody out in your community, in your workplace, in the grocery store, the gas station. Find somebody uh, just to tell about Jesus. And if, they, if you have an issue, hey, go ahead and put yourself out there. Be led by the Holy Spirit. But put yourself in a position for Jesus to move through you. And, and always remember, these are his hands. Come on, if you didn't put that in the chat, make sure and put that in the chat. We're not going to lay empty hands on people. We're not going to lay emotional hands on people. We're going to lay Jesus' hands on people. We are the body of Christ. And if we are his body, these are his hands. And when we lay Jesus' hands on people, it's no different than Jesus touching them himself because he actually is. Friend, I'm telling you, the more you begin to think like that, the more you start to feel it and the more you start to experience it. The, the anointing of God, the life of God that's on the inside of us. You talk like this, you think like this. I'm telling you, it'll start to change your experiences. Praise the Lord. So, hey, find somebody. I'm going to find somebody this week too. God bless you. I love you so very much. Uh, make sure and access all the wonderful stuff we have for you, the partner platform, the app. Uh, go on YouTube. Uh, we've got some great stuff on there as well. If you're watching my YouTube, make sure and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and the, uh, the, the subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And uh, we would love to see you at one of our upcoming meetings. So God bless you. I love you so very much. Remember in Christ, we always win. We'll see you next Tuesday for another session of Heathen Talks. Bye-bye.